HydroTest Products has designed this software to replace handwritten test record forms used by cylinder retesters. The software will assist the retester in keeping more accurate and more professional looking records, meeting the U.S. Department of Transportation and Transport Canada regulations. The software is supplied on a USB thumb drive and requires Windows Operating System 7 or greater. The software cannot be downloaded or saved to a network or shared file. To download the software, navigate to the thumb drive where you will see the installer icon. Double click on the installer icon to start the installation. Click on the next box to begin the installation. Accept the terms of the license agreement and click next. The download automatically puts the software in a program file on your hard drive. We suggest that you take this default location, however you can change the destination if you wish. Click on the next box and then the install box. The installation will then begin. Once installation is complete, click launch, volumetric tester box, and click finish. The software will now open. As with any Windows based software, you can rearrange the form and stretch or shrink the size to fit your screen. The software uses the basic Windows tabs configuration. Under File, there are commands for New, Open, Close, Options, Print, Export Records as .csv files. Under the Test tab is New, Save, Delete, History, Calibrated Cylinders. This is where you will make calibrated cylinder templates. Sensor Calibration used if the software is being used to run your test machine, pre-test tab, and an auto test. The controller tab is not used when the software is being used in the standalone mode. The help tab will direct you to our website and it will also show you where all of your history records are being kept on your hard drive. This is very useful information in case you need to delete your test history at any time. On the top of the screen are the tabs for calibrated cylinder test and cylinder testing. The data log and diagnostic screens are not used when the software is being used in the standalone mode. Before you start to use a the software, there are some options that need to be set up unique to your company. Click on the File and then Options. In the General Settings box, type in a name for your test machine. It can be anything that you want. Next, double click the serial number and type in the serial number for your test machine. Type in all your company information. This will print out on your header of each test record form, so make sure it is complete and correct.
Under license information, those at a DOT or Transport Canada license are required to input their DOT REN or TC license number. In the configuration settings box, be sure that the enable automated mode is left unchecked. You are given the option of turning on DOT and TC warnings and can set the pressure units to PSI or bar. I will turn on the warning box for this exercise. The controller box is not used when the software is being used in the standalone mode. Check to make sure that all of your company information is correct. If you ever need to reset the settings, you can click on this box and it will set it back to factory specs and now click on OK. The next procedure is to set up your calibrated cylinder template. Go to the test tab, calibrated cylinder, click on the add tab, Type in the serial number for the calibrated cylinder. And name the calibrated cylinder. I will use Cal Cylinder 1. A date and time stamp is automatically generated. Now click Save. Click in the step box and start filling in your calibrated cylinder pressures and expansion values from your calibrated cylinder certificate. The ID number is automatically generated. The step numbers are generally used in a numerical order. However, you can put each pressure in whatever order you choose. Once you've completed entering all of the information, click Save and close the window. Most retest facilities will have only one calibrated cylinder. If your facility has more than one, then this process will need to be completed for each calibrated cylinder. Now that options and calibrated cylinder information has been entered, you can begin to use the software. The first step is to open a new database. Go to the file, New Database. A Create Database box will appear. A date and timestamp are automatically generated as a name for the file. We suggest that you use this default name, however you can change it to whatever you want. The software automatically sets up a folder on your hard drive to save the records in. For this exercise, it will change the default folder and save these files to the USB thumb drive that contains the downloaded software. I'll create a new folder on the thumb drive and call it test records. Now every time I create or save a new file, it will go to this folder by default. As the first procedure each day prior to testing, the calibrated cylinder must be run and show system accuracy to applicable regulations. Click on the Cal Cylinder Test tab. Enter operator name or initials. Select a calibrated cylinder template. If you have more than one, scroll to the desired template. Once the correct calibrated cylinder has been selected, click on the load template. Now displayed is the calibrated cylinder information we previously entered in the Cal Cylinder template. Click on each pressure you want to verify for that particular day and now enter the test results. The elastic expansion and deviation percentage are automatically generated.
For this exercise, we will use the pressures of 3,000 and 5,000 only. When done entering, click on the Save Results tab, and only the re records that you enabled will be saved. Remember to meet DOT requirements, the calibrated cylinder must show zero permanent expansion and a deviation of 1% or less. If either of these values exceed the DOT limits, a warning will be shown to alert you. Now that the calibrated cylinder has been used to verify test system accuracy, you can now begin daily testing. Click on the test tab to open. Click on the new test button. Notice the left hand side will summarize what is being done. In the first block, enter the operator's name or initials. Using the tab key to navigate, enter the cylinder owner. Enter the serial number of the cylinder being tested, the manufacturer ID of the cylinder, whether the cylinder has passed or failed the required visual inspection, the physical size of the cylinder, diameter by length, the specification and service pressure, the retest period in years, the minimum hold time, the permanent expansion limit, in this case we'll put in 10 percent, and the rejection of elastic expansion limit, which we'll leave blank for this exercise. Type in the actual test pressure that you went to, the total expansion value, the permanent expansion value, and notice that the elastic expansion and percent expansion are automatically generated. It allows you to type in any type of note that you wish. And once you save the test, you'll notice that it has passed the cylinder because the percentage of expansion of 5.7 is less than the permanent expansion limit of 10 percent. To start a new test, simply click on the new test button. You'll notice on the left hand side that it's now showing one cylinder has passed and this cylinder here is not tested. All of the fields are kept from the previous cylinder except for the serial number. Type in the serial number of the new cylinder that you're testing and we'll keep all of the information the same on this test. Enter your actual test pressure that you went to. Enter the total expansion, the permanent expansion, and again it figures out the elastic expansion and the percentage automatically. In this case the cylinder has failed because the percentage of expansion 10.8 exceeds the permanent expansion limit of 10 percent. It automatically flags the cylinder has failed and shows the failure reason is excessive permanent expansion. To begin a new test, click on the new test button. Again you'll notice that now we have two cylinders. One has passed, one has failed. All of the information stays the same. However you can change it at any time by highlighting that block and in this case we're going to change the cylinder owner. Enter in the serial number for this particular cylinder. We're also going to change the manufacturer's ID and we'll change the physical size of the cylinder. We'll 
change the specification and service pressure. Type in your actual pressure. Again, your total expansion value, your permanent expansion value, and this cylinder will pass. And we'll do a new test. In this next example, we're going to use the rejection of elastic expansion field to pass or fail the cylinder. Type in the serial number. In this case, we're going to change the manufacturer's ID. And we're going to make a change on the cylinder length. And we're going to type in a DOT special permit. And on the permanent expansion limit, we're going to put in 99% because we're not concerned about the permanent expansion limit. In the REE limit, we're going to put in 120 that we got from the cylinder. We're not using it for plus stamping. And we'll put in our actual test pressure. And you'll notice now that a warning comes up. If you remember correctly, we did not run the calibrated cylinder to within 500 PSI of our test pressure. In normal cases, you would go back and rerun the calibrated cylinder to DOT requirements. For this exercise, we're just going to cancel out. It still will allow you to do the test, but it will come up numerous times to warn you. Once you click out of that field, another warning box comes up. We're going to cancel that out. Enter your total expansion number. Your permanent expansion number. And there's our elastic expansion. And in this case, it's going to fail the cylinder. And again, once you hit the Save Test button, that same warning field will come up, letting you know that you did not run the calibrated cylinder properly. The reason for this failure is excessive REE. The 141.8 exceeds the 120 under the REE limit. On this new test, we're now going to demonstrate the plus stamping recording, which is allowed on some cylinders for a 10% overfill. After hitting the new test button, type in the serial number. We're going to change the manufacturer's ID again. And change the size of the cylinder. And put in a new DOT specification. We are going to change the permanent expansion limit to 10% based on that DOT spec, the REE limit. Again, we we're either going to get that from the cylinder or in this case maybe from the C5 pamphlet, CGA pamphlet. It is 165 and since we're plus stamping we're going to click on the REE used for plus stamping blocks. Put in an actual test pressure. And again, that warning comes up letting us know that we did not run our calibrated cylinder to DOT requirements. We should have run it at 4,000 if we're going to test at 4,000. We'll cancel out of that. Put in our total expansion value. our permanent expansion value and in this case our elastic expansion is 
it exceeds the REE limit, and again that warning comes up, it exceeds the REE limit but it did not fail the cylinder. The specification allows you to still use a cylinder but you just cannot plus stamp it or overfill it by the 10 percent. In this case it would be advisable to put a note that you cannot plus stamp it. You're also required to put in where you receive the REE number from and typically that is from either the cylinder or the Compressed Gas Association C5 pamphlet. Once the test is saved that warning will come up again about the calibrated cylinder not being run properly. Please remember in this exercise we were canceling out of that warning. However, if you are testing cylinders you must make sure that you run the calibrated cylinder to DOT or Transport Canada requirements. A very powerful feature of the software is the history function. To get to the history screen, go to the test tab to history. Here you will find all of the tests that have been saved. You can view all of the data for all of the completed tests. You also have the ability to sort all of the data by click clicking on any of the header tabs. This allows for an easy and quick way to find a particular customer or cylinder. There is also a built-in date filter allowing you to show any record from a start to an end date. From this screen you can also print all records of selected records only. You can also select and copy records using the keyboard shortcut of Control C and Control V to paste and export to other applications such as Microsoft Excel. You can select multiple individual records by holding down the Control key or you can select multiple records in a series by holding down the Shift key. Another option for printing records is to go back to the test screen and with a file open go to File Print. From here the print box will allow you to print all records for that daily file or selected records only. Another option for exporting files is to export daily files as a dot CSV format, which then can be opened by popular software such as Microsoft Excel or Access. The exports feature is offered for those that may want to save the data in another program that can be accessed by others not using the HydroTest software. In normal situations there is no need to export your data as the built-in history screen provides a multitude of functionality. As with any software, it is important that you have a good backup plan in place. We strongly suggest that you backup all of your test files every day. The simplest way to do this is to go to the File Open. This will bring you directly to all of your files. Click on a file or hold down the Shift key to select multiple files and drag and drop them to your backup media. As an alternative, you can select the files you want to back up, right click and copy that file. Then locate your backup media, right click and paste. There are many commercially available backup tools that will perform a backup automatically.